Se o silêncio dissesse tudo Um sentimento bom que me leva pro outro mundo A vontade de te ver já é maior que tudo Não existem distâncias no meu novo mundo Tipo coisas da sétima Episode number 54, we are back. Clint Cronin Show, Want vs. Need, Al Lagura. What's up, brother? Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Appreciate for, it. Man, thank you for having me here. Right? <laughs> this is a secret spot over here. Um, we're at the Want vs. Need headquarters. We're kind of in the, the back room. We got uh, some collection stuff, some stuff behind me that I'm kind of deliberately here. You can't see, <laughs> but it may or may not be coming soon. I don't know, right? <laughs> it's just... Uh, you gotta be like, you can't see all this. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, some of my stuff is here, but a lot of these are samples and, you know, I collect shoes here and there, but I'm trying to stop it because I spend way too much money on that. But, yep. you know, we have a different focus now is try to fund want versus need. So uh, no more shoes for the rest of the year, I hope. Yeah, yeah. I said that, <laughs> um, man, a couple of years ago, I was I was spending like too much money on Jordans and uh, then eventually boosts and then show you roll geese and just geese in general. And I wound up with a closet full of Jordans and a closet full of geese. And um, I only have one back and I only have two feet on me. So I'm trying to go a little bit more minimalist lately. I unloaded a big, you know, part of my collection, all the sneakers and stuff. And uh, just trying to be a little bit more practical. But sometimes I see some stuff that when I was a kid, a lot of like, I always really like the retro Jordans. Mm -hmm. So I see the, the ones and the threes and I'm, I just, it, it's difficult if it's like an, it's an original, the OG pairs, you know? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, most of the time we have this, something called FOMO, fear of missing out. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> every time we see something, this is like, we got to have it. We got to have it. And we always have to, sometimes, you know, when I was younger, I would like, you know what? I could eat later, but these Jordans, I will never get it ever again. Oh yeah, so. <laughs> man. We used to have to be careful back in the day. You would you'd go to like Philadelphia, you'd go to New York or something, and you'd be wearing whatever you had at the time. I mean, if it was the pumps or something. Remember the Shack pumps? Yes, yes, yeah. So you'd be you'd be walking down the street, and uh, if anybody, if a stranger ever asked you, "Hey, what size are those?" I like. It's like <laughs> you're about to get jacked. It's yeah. Like, now it's time to move. You're about to put those shoes to good use. Yeah. You're gonna scuff them. <laughs> you know. So, but the right answer would be, "It's my size." the right the right <laughs> the right move was to keep moving fast there's no like once you stop to respond you're probably getting jacked so you don't want to get jacked yeah i mean in my early teens uh i love jordans but we couldn't afford them my mom could not buy them for me so either i have only one or i would just wear like chuck something like super cheap 29.99 you know but so i got a job later on uh you know 16 17 then i was able to afford them here and there Oh yeah. So for me, uh, my dad was a really big Celtics fan, a big Larry Bird fan. And so that meant he of course is not a Magic Johnson or a Michael Jordan fan. And because of this, that I just wasn't happening. I just was not going to have Jordans in that house. In that so, house. And that, that was just it. So as I got older, I, you know, I always wanted the ones, I always wanted the different threes because at the time, um, the older kids had them on the bus and everybody was tripping on them. It was, you saw the commercials on TV and then eventually, you know, the space jam, movie in the 11s which uh, we were talking about earlier i like 11s but they just don't look right on me for some reason like it's bulky yeah they're they're like these big moon boot things and a lot of people love them and uh, people die over christmas on them you know for them you know the when they go on sale uh, you know the breads or the the concords there's been oh yeah multiple times where people get killed you know because they're waiting outside of these stores on christmas eve or whatever day it is and the people that, you know, the, the FOMO, their fear of missing out turns yeah. into violence and people die over sneakers. Yeah, it's it's a little nuts. But, you know, luckily I haven't had that, you know, kind of stuff happening to me because either I get them super early or, you know, I get them from friends, but never had to line up or anything like that, which is, which is a good thing. Like I said, when I was younger, we could never afford them. You know, like I had an older sister that would kind of help me buy shoes, but it was either Fila or, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. something else. Then I would just like, all right, I'll take whatever I can. But like I said, you know, as soon as like I got my own, you know, job, I was able to afford like my own Jordans, but like they were still expensive back then. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's crazy that that was one of the one, the, the first shoes where you would see over, you know, 150, a hundred, even a hundred dollars, $150. Seeing that back in the day was a big deal. It was because, uh, 
for a long time I was just into street skating. So it was, you know, Vans or then eventually DVS and DC and Etnies and DESs and stuff, just shoes that I could wear to school, but I could also skate in. So, um, cause I, I went from kind of playing basketball to, as a kid. So I was, I was like one of the taller kids, like, uh, like young, uh, younger ages, mm -hmm. like the, the beginning part of middle school or like grades and, and the grade school, I was one of the taller, like taller kids and I would play, you know, center. But then as you kind of go on through school, other kids sort of like you, you, they, the school sort of like, uh, you had all these different elementary schools, then it would like sort of, you know, trickle down into like one or two middle schools and that would trickle down into just like a few high schools and there was way taller kids. So they're like, well, I guess you're going to be a forward now or a guard. And I, I just, <laughs> I, 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 when you get good at one position and then the other one requires additional athleticism, and you, and, no, in basketball, I just, it, and it just didn't really, really click for me. So I went from the basketball shoes, the Jordans to being more into skateboarding and stuff. Yeah, I think pretty much uh, growing up, it was more of like, I was really just more into like Chucks because I was surrounded with like more of the Hispanic sides oh, yeah, and, yeah. you know, all the, you know, all the Corteses and whatnot. So it was more of that side. But like I said, you know, I was really, I mean, you know, I do wanted to rock Jordans, but I didn't have a lot of friends that was wearing them until later on in my age. Like I got really into it as like at age, you know, 17, 16. I was kind of late on it, but at the same time, it was like when I did get into it, man, it got a little crazy. The whole house had boxes of boxes of shoes. And, uh, you know, uh, I got married young. So, and my, you know, the, the wife would just be like, what is all this? You know, yeah. almost every week had shoes, you know, so, but. But, you know, I'm toning it down now. Um, I think it's been at least uh, a couple months now. I haven't bought shoes, which is really good. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's one thing if you're, you know, just kind of hoarding them. But if, if you're able to either, you know, if you're enjoying them or you're, you're reselling them. And a lot of people don't like resellers. But, I mean, I just remember I missed out on a pair of um, uh, the Jordan 11 breads, uh, the Lowe's. Mm. I missed out. No, 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 I'm sorry. Um, what was it? I missed out on a different shoe. But I was able to get like three pairs of the, the that particular shoe, and I, I turned them around and sold them on eBay like within minutes, and oh. I, I made like an extra eighty to a hundred dollars per pair, and it, it took like literally no time at all to do. It was just a matter of creating it. I was I was on the elliptical doing the whole thing. <laughs> I just used the stock photos because I knew I had them from I, I I had the confirmations from Nike and from Foot Action whatever, and I had three pairs, and I turned around and flipped them on eBay, and I made you know probably four four hundred or something dollars just real quick. And the feeling, the gratification of making that money and actually selling them was better than the gratification of like buying them. Uh -huh. So at that point I was thinking, well, do I want to be a consumer always? Do I want to be on that side of the coin always? Or do I want to kind of be in sort of the, the sales side of it and actually be, you know, making money and having something to show for it later. And so I, I was never into sales as a kid, like yeah. I, when I was younger and earlier in my career and now. Uh, at this point, I I see a, a lot of uh, it's fun. It's it's yeah. fun. I like the networking. I like talking. I like you know helping people solve problems. So I, I used to think it was like this dirty word or dirty thing, but now like you know sales. Like if you're if you're in business at all, you, yeah, yeah. You're, you're selling. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't fault resellers, but I was never a reseller. Like anything that I would get, I would just hoard them. <laughs> I mean, it was just so bad that I would just like keep them, and you know just just to keep them for some reason like like i said it was just like fear of missing out like you know if i sell like you know this particular shoes i always ask myself is like will i ever get that again like mm, i mean if okay 150 dollars i can sell it for but will i ever ever get that again you know that's always in my back of my head so i was never a good reseller when i do sell stuff man i would just feel bad for myself for like days like Oh, man, I let go that shoes or I let go that Supreme bag or I let go this. And it's like, I will never get that back. So, you know, but I am getting better. And uh, in the past, I've used a lot of my collection to uh, fun want versus need. So <laughs> oh, man, it, it's a great thing because there's a lot of people out there that like it now I, I, that are really into this brand. I, I noticed there's, you know, on Facebook, there's these groups where you can buy a oh, lot yeah. of, like really rare. Geese. Oh, yeah. I avoid those. Well, as much as possible your stuff's in one now <laughs> there's there it's like show your role um uh, uh albino preto um maybe control but then want versus need is in there as well oh, and then illis, illis is in there too 
Yeah, I try to avoid this uh, 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 trade market on Facebook because when I see something cool, I was like, oh, I want to buy that. But do I really need it? Like I said, man, like fear of missing out. But, you know, uh, I try to avoid it as much as possible. I mean, just from a brand perspective, it shows, you know, that you're in one of those in brands now that you're like your your brand is up there next to those names in like in one of those marketplaces. It's definitely like a it's like a milestone. Oh, man. It's humbling. You it's know, cool, like, right? yeah, it's, you know, kind of uh, it still trips me out. Yeah. It's till this day, like I know we've been in, in the in the mar I mean in the, in business for a while now, but it's just still trips me out. Like when people wear our stuff, it's like, wow, people. I mean, I mean, I guess people dig our stuff, but you know, I, I'm always, you know, it, it always humbles me when I see it. It it it, sh it should. That's that's that's, that's the right that's the right uh, you know thing to feel. It's it's a great experience, man. You've like you built something from an idea and it manifested into the, there's a, there's a whole office. There's all kinds of gear. There's a following. There's people watching right now the live stream. I'm not sure how many, <laughs> but um, it, it's great and it's um just to have recognition i know just you know having people email me and like contact me about stuff you know just related to my podcast it's this is just me rattling on about jujitsu and literally how it's made my life better yeah so, i mean it's crazy like uh it's what you learn by accident like you don't really know what will happen with that like you know i was when i started i was just like shooting videos for my friends uh that wasn't getting a lot of uh media attention because at the end of the day it's like when we do something it's like we want to see ourselves like so i was you know i learned by mistake by like just shooting videos by my friends and then that kind of grew into uh you know oh uh, a media brand at the moment at the time and then next thing you know it's like whoa one versus me this is cool like you just you guys do really sick highlights and i'll still be like well it's just my friends and it grew into like oh what if we make some stickers Oh, cool. Here, we just give it out. Like, what not? Like, you know, like I said, we have, we still have no, I mean, we have an idea now, but at the time, we still have no idea what we wanted, what version it was. But it's just learning by accident and it's the greatest thing because that thing that you learn could turn into a passion and that can, that passion can turn into your career, which is, you know, pretty trippy. But, you know, you just have to just do stuff and you never know. Yeah, it's it's uh, like Gary Vanderchuk or Gary V. Everybody is is blown up. This just this dude from Jersey that had a you know a, a website about wine tasting, right? He's a different animal, by the way. Oh man, he's a different animal. But his hustle and just his charisma, his energy, and his just sort of he the things he talks about are just so practical and seem so obvious until yeah. you apply his level of energy to it. And his he he's just got balls of steel, man. Yeah. He goes for it every single time, you know. It, and he's been able to basically build an like exactly build an empire yeah from what started as one of the early youtube channels or just youtube shows or videos about just wine tasting yeah i mean you know not everyone is the same not everyone is built for it but something so practical practical and easy but when you start applying that almost every single day and you don't see a result it's it's tiring you know but you just got to keep on going and keep going and just don't stop you know like we've seen better days here in one versus me and some days we just be really down but one thing that uh you know is to have focus and just keep on digging because you never know until you get there you know but just you just just can't stop but gary is a different animal like yeah. the, the things that he says is very easy and practical but man that's every single day hustle like how how much can you do this every single day well, he'll even talk about simple things like you probably have like five thousand dollars, and not you because you have kind of crazy collections of Jordans and <laughs> stuff. But the average person out there has got five grand worth of stuff just sitting around, and if you just put it on eBay, you would be able to cash out and be able to you know take that extra money and do something with it, and invest in yourself, invest in your projects, and I think just this the idea of doing that it's people think about it like oh i have to list all this stuff i have to do this i have to do that but they're willing to put all this time into playing madden or they're willing to play all the, put all this time into playing halo or i don't even know what the video oh yeah is. oh yeah so if you're willing to spend your time that way that's fine but his main thing is if don't complain if, don't complain don't complain if you are sitting at home you know i mean some people just want a regular job which is a, which is great which is i have no fault that you know some people wants to do you know once crazy stuff happening in their life and that's okay but you know, if you're just sitting around and not doing much, you can't really say 
you can't complain. You know, you can't be like, oh, nothing's going on. Nothing is happening to my life. When you're just sitting around and not manifesting of what you want to do with your life. So a lot of it starts with just writing it down and, um, you know, going from there, I use Evernote and I'm, I'm probably one of the, I write everything. One of like the, the jujitsu people that, that talks about the stupid app. I, I, they should probably sponsor the show. It, it's, it's like notes for your iPhone, but you can tag your notes and add pictures and videos and you can dictate stuff to it. And I, I think I have like two or 3000 notes. Called? Evernote. Evernote. Mm. It, there's an app for iPhone, iPad, the com- for Mac, Windows, and then there's a website version of it. So, and if you have any kind of notes, you can put like tags in them, like what they are, and have multiple notebooks. You can access it from anywhere. You know, it's it's secure. You can collaborate on notes and stuff. Um, it it just works really well for me because I'll have an idea, and you know, they say get really creative first thing in the morning or like really close to bed. And I don't like to be on the phone right before sleep because it, it does make it harder to sleep. Like there's, there's science there with the bright colors mm-hmm. and stuff. So I don't like to be on the phone close to bedtime. However, um, if something pops in my head and it's, it's enough that I'm excited about it, I'm going to jump on, I'm going to dictate it. I'm going to send it to my Evernote and then, you know, in the morning I'll have a reminder so I can get back to it. So, Cause I want to follow through on things. I want to, if I have a, an idea that's, you know, something that makes me excited or that, that I'm motivated to do, I want to take action on it. So like first thing I'll start writing it down. Like, what does it take to do this? Like what's the feasibility on it? Who do I need? Uh, what do I need from them? Like, is it money? How much, where would I get it? And I just start like making a whole, uh, almost like a plan out of it. Just like, just what are the requirements to get this done? And I even put down how much time it takes from each person or each thing. Oh yeah. You know, that's the one thing that I'm learning this year is just to write things down Yeah. because a lot of things is in my head that I want to do this and do that. But you know, once, once I write it down is I can be able to see it and read about it and then really have, uh, you know, what's the process, you know, how do we, you know, how do we get there? So yeah, I mean, just writing it down is, is the first step. Yeah, like anytime there's ever been work that I've had to do in my, you know, my my whole tech career, it's the the, the important stuff comes out of project work. Like it's always the the ad hoc stuff. Like it never gets done. The quick question shit, and until it becomes formalized as a project in general, like the big stuff never happens. So I try to just look at it that way, and manage my time accordingly. Think about how much time is this going to take? And I do it at the beginning of the end of each week. I, I don't care what's going on. I take 15 minutes twice a week, uh, Friday, Sunday, and, uh, one's the Sunday is planning the next week and Friday is reflecting what, what went well, what didn't, and what do I need to do? Like, what did I accomplish? What I didn't, and how do I go forward and make it, you know, make the next week better and don't sit there and cry about it. But like, yeah. If, if stuff's on the back burner all the time, like more than two or three times, I'm thinking, well, is this a feasible thing? Is this, is this really going to happen? And is it a priority? Cause if it's not, then take it off the list, you know, be, be willing to pivot, be, you know, I, I read a really good book recently, uh, by the guys from the, they developed that Ruby on rails language and a couple other software like mm-hmm. CRM tools. I forget the name, but it's called rework oh. and it's, uh, basically, just, just some practical business advice for like now, as opposed to a lot of stuff you learn in MBA is like about the, the size of the company and all this stuff. Like you can be small and deliberately small. And oh. I mean, I mean, I mean, we look at it now from five years ago or even like, you know, a couple of years ago, right. In regards to uh, making, doing your own business or making your own business or whatever. I mean, now anybody can, can make products, anybody. Yeah. I mean, you know, just by the touch of the, you know, the internet, uh, you can just look up things up and then, and then you can just, anybody can make any products now. So, which is like the greatest thing ever. So. Yeah. I mean, from just tangible goods to just information type stuff, there's so many, uh, so many people out there with so much information that just doing an ebook or an online course or selling just uh, some kind of service online, it, it's, it's really easy to do and getting a website online and all this stuff. It's ridiculously easy now. <laughs> You can just jump in Shopify and then boom, there's, yeah. there's big businesses out there that are using Shopify. They're paying an arm and a leg to do so. Um, once you start getting like to this level of success where you're selling enough product to really like quit your job and oh, yeah, 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 you shouldn't be using Shopify anymore. Like you wind up paying quite a bit. But. Yeah. I mean, five years ago, just an example is like making a rash guard. It was so difficult. Yep. In making a geese, it was so difficult. I mean, you can make any rash guard and geese nowadays, but some of them, some, I mean, most of them are like, uh, not really good but 
it's easy because now people like if you somewhat just being in the industry or a brand like you have people hitting you up now before you had to find this man this factories or manufacturer and whatnot now it's like man i get on my social media as i get hit up like hey Oh, I'm yeah. a BGJ manufacturer, and oh, you can make, and all, yeah. I mean, time. <laughs> but I'm saying like now it's there, it's easier. Now you just have to, f you know, figure out your own, um, and you know, do your diligence of, uh, you know, uh, you know, research and whatnot. But it's a lot easier nowadays. But in the same time, it's like even though it's easier, it's like how do you put it out? So you, now you gotta like really work in getting it out there, and you just can't stop if you're trying to do something, you know. Oh well, yeah, for sure. It's it's about diligence and the, just the passion behind it, and a lot of it is sort of what you mentioned earlier, recognizing the difference between sort of a hobby and a career, or like is is or a hobby and a product. Mm -hmm. so I don't think a lot of people do, um, and it's it's okay, it's fine. Like a lot of things that we're really passionate about, like they are hobbies, but then all of a sudden, as you mentioned, you start looking at like, okay, well, here's this thing I'm really passionate about. It's the videos and stuff. And then, okay, now here's a logo. They like the logo, so it's stickers. But all of a sudden, it's like, well, they really like our style and our, you know, our way of doing things. And now it's, you know, it's gear, it's it's t-shirts, it's it's uh, you know, it's it's bags, it's <laughs> geese, it's all kinds of stuff. It's it's a whole, you know, subculture of yeah. the the sort of jujitsu uh, movement, or you know, it's it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's it, it's nice that the uh, that the sport or the art, depending on who and what you believe, yeah, uh, is opened up to allow opportunity for that. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things you just have to surround yourself too. Like people, you know, like I'm a byproduct of my surrounding most of the time, you know, like who you surrounded with is sometimes that is, that's what you do in life. So you got to be careful who you surround with sometimes. But luckily I have good friends that are, have good heads with them, you know, like, so like an example, like, you know, I got into jiu-jitsu and now we started to make geese and whatnot. But like, just to give you an example, like, who you surrounded with, sometimes it's what you become. Absolutely. So you have to be careful who you're around sometimes. So I think it's like so you're a videographer, right? It's like rule of thirds. I think. Yeah. Well, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I I think that keeping your friends from back in the day, family and stuff, regardless of you know how they're doing, what they're doing, you don't forget where you came from. But then you want to be around people that are around your same level, like at in terms of like career. And like just socially, and this it sounds like a dick thing to break things down in thirds like this, but honestly, and then that other third, you want people that are better better than you, that are further along than you, that have already done these things. Because what happens is if you hang around with just your your homies from back in the day, or like people that are just around your same. I have level, a perfect example for that. Perfect example. See? So, I mean, an, an example, right? I'm hanging out with the same friends since high school, yep. and if you want to do something new, if you want to do something new. You either get called names and, you know, you get distracted by doing some stuff. So when I started doing my own videos, I knew, you know, most of my friends that I'm hanging out now wouldn't understand. And they'll call you names, which is kind of, you know, just, just the way we are. You know, we just yeah. talk shit to each other. But so sometimes you just have to be alone and do it yourself and kind of just get away from that. And then, you know, once, once you successfully kind of... Uh, you know, get that stuff done. And then, you know, you can still hang out with your friends, but you, you, sometimes you just got to do things alone by yourself. Like, like I said, when I started doing videos, no one really understood, but I was like, I was shooting like, you know, just random things. Like I was shooting my family or I was shooting myself, like riding a motorcycle or a bike or a skateboard and stuff like that. But sometimes people don't understand what you're trying to do. So you just have to be alone to do things just so you can learn some new stuff, you know? Oh, totally. I mean, just by being around people that they've either not, they don't have that level of ambition to go and start their own business. It's difficult. Or, or to take a hobby that that seriously, you'll get a lot of the heckling, you'll get a lot of, and what they do <laughs> is it's it's fear of the unknown. Most people, they want the, the nine to five because it's it's safe and it's comfortable and stuff. And that's what the generation before them said to do because get, get a good job, you, you put money into your retirement and then you'll be fine and social security and whatever. But yeah, that's great and it is safe and that's cool for a lot of people, but um, by surrounding yourself with people that are like at your same level 
if that's all you do, you just talk about, yeah, one day we're gonna, one day we're mm -hmm. gonna, and like, but nobody ever does. No. It just, it's talk. But so having like those mentor types in your life, people that have already done it, it goes from being like this, man, this mountain of a thing to, to be successful in a business or to be successful at releasing a product or whatever it is. Once you're around people that have already succeeded in business, either finan you know, financially, whatever, uh, that have done it, it's like, no, no, no. It's just, you do one, two, three, four, very simple. It's just, it's a formula now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to these people it's a recipe so having the that type of like mentor just people there's people that are just further along than you like it's oh, so yeah. invaluable oh yeah it's, i mean it's it's so huge and uh because it makes it tangible it's it, it, it makes it seem like oh the the goal is with insight i i was right and here's where i need to adjust here's things i'm doing wrong now and being able to look at yourself in the mirror like it, it's like jujitsu man um if you aren't up front with yourself about you know where you are i mean it'll just nature takes its course and you're just going to get mowed over anyway oh, yeah if you, or you just avoid the people that are difficult to, or you avoid the people that are better than you you're it's a lie you know this jujitsu is like it's like business man like even though business can be very dishonest mm -hmm, jujitsu mm -hmm. is the last honest job oh yeah it's an <laughs> ego killer yeah so if you you get in there and you, you're thinking you have some kind of ego and Man, you, you'll just keep getting smashed and smashed until maybe you get your black belt and maybe you'll be the top top of the food chain. But still, you know, you're oh. it's forever. Yeah. You're going to get smashed forever. Jiu-jitsu and business have a lot of, like, uh, jiu-jitsu and life have a lot of parallels. And there's a lot of, life, like, life lessons that are so, so critical that you get from jiu-jitsu. Like, always improve position. Oh. Always improve position. Because in life, if you don't, you get complacent this is when things so what happened to this thing what happened to that thing i don't know what happened you didn't i truly believe that jujitsu have changed the way i look at a lot of things in life so you know when i was younger i was i was involved in a lot of troubles i mean i would fight anybody if i had i mean you know i would fight anybody just so just to prove some kind of point and you know and i didn't know how to fight that's 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 the problem. I don't know how to fight. I didn't know how to do jujitsu. I didn't know how to do anything. All I see is being a tough guy in the street. And now that I know jujitsu, it's like, man, I'm like, I'm not. Yeah, uh, feel lucky, huh? Yeah, like I'm. I'm just like, wow. So like, I'm actually not. I mean, I don't know what the word is. I don't know if it's scared, but like, I I I avoid fights. I just walk away, you know, as much as possible. But you know, once here and there, it's like I still get a little bit of. Uh, you know, hothead, but, um, is I mean, you know, you think about it when, once you walk away, it's like, is that really worth it? You know? So yeah, man, this just jujitsu just changed the way I look at things at life, you know? Yeah. It takes a lot to kind of get me anywhere near that and sort of like, <laughs> and I'm, it's not that I'm passive or anything like that. It's just like, first, I don't put myself in situations where it's, it's a thing. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I don't wind up in places where there'd normally be that kind of tension. And I try, I just try to avoid people. I don't want to be around. Mm -hmm. Um, you can, you can read a, a crowd pretty well. Um, I'll help, uh, I'll help some friends out with, with security at bars sometimes, just like with their short staff. Like last night I, I helped my buddy out cause he was the only one there. And, um, one person doing security at this particular bar is not safe for anyone. So I'm just hanging out. Um, and uh, in general, you can tell from what I've seen there, the, the security people that are a little bit more mature emotionally don't wind up in fights and they keep the place just as safe. They're able to get people out. They're able to defuse situations and stuff. Their pride isn't hurt by it. They're doing their job. Everybody's safe. It's fine. But mm -hmm. the emotional maturity and that anger management stuff, we're all guilty of it. We're all uh, deep down, like everybody can be good people right mm -hmm. but under different pressures and circumstances like we can all be complete assholes too oh yeah and i'm guilty of it all the time i'm also wrong all the time and don't really have a problem oh yeah like, yeah i had to accept that i'm wrong every single time you're like okay if i did something wrong like i have to accept that okay th those are not things that are not right but you know which i mean we're not perfect you know nobody is so we just have to keep on moving forward you know yeah it's um you know, I, I used to get really attached to certain ideas and whatever. And um, just to figure out, I was, you know, there's more end than or to the world. So, you know, I, I try not to do that anymore. I try to hear things out. I'm trying to not 
what the hell was it? I read that book. I, I took a really fucking long walk a few uh, weeks ago, like 11, 12 miles, man, all the way east side. I left my car um, and it was stupid. Anyway, it no, was- No, but sometimes you need that. Sometimes I, you just need to be alone. I could have Ubered. And, but to me, I was like, I did something I wasn't very happy about. So I decided, okay, you know, you need to walk this off. You need to like clear your head. And I listened to two uh, audio books. Uh, one was um, Rework, the one I was talking about mm -hmm. earlier. The other was the, I think- um, the seven habits for highly successful individuals. I, I, did I read that the next week? I, I don't know. I've read like three books that week, but that one, they were saying like your ability to control your response and they call it, that's what the, being responsible literally is. So they say in the first 20 milliseconds, like 0.2 seconds or whatever, if you react right then and there, that's like a, that's a reaction. And that's just like a, like you, you just reacted after that. It's deliberate, whatever you say. And a lot of times people just say, shit to be hurtful in response or like they'll react they'll say something terrible and it's because it's not cool like think about it socially man it's not cool for whatever reason in our culture to tell somebody you're happy or you're sad think about the last time you're like dude i'm really happy you, your friends would be like okay fuck or <laughs> yeah. like or you say i'm sad be like quit being a bitch just blah 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 you know? mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. if you're like i'm pissed off or it, it's whatever like those are like acceptable cool responses in this culture now yeah you don't yeah. so when pe what happens is if somebody is so say somebody says something they hurt your feelings sad whatever the feeling is uh regret whatever you think about it and then you're like man your pride kicks in you transmogrify that feeling into hey fuck them for making me feel sad I'm angry now. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go back and I'm going to be a tough guy. and I'm going to say some stupid shit back. So it's like, it's a, just inability to like respond, uh, you know, to have to, to, to the, the inability to control your response. So it's like, it's not responsible. So just being able to like, uh, stop for a minute, breathe, think about it for a second and be able to actually respond thoughtfully. It's like this huge skill. That's like, Oh man, that re it requires a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, for me anyway. So like I said, just just learning day by day of how to respond to a lot of the things that people are saying or people are doing and whatnot. So, I mean, I'm, I, you know, we're, we're all trying to learn. So, I mean, that's some really good insight, you know? So, yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, podcasts and like eBooks yeah. are really helpful to just get you like through that mindset of like just listening. Some some of these things are very easy. Sometimes we just need to hear it, you know? Like, so some of those like, like I listen to a lot of podcasts and uh, I listen to a lot of eBooks. So those things really helped me out a lot. Like, you know, like last year we were kind of going through, uh, I was kind of going through like stress mode in uh, early, I mean, late 2016. And what helped me a lot was just like, listening to podcasts and kind of just surrounding myself with with good people you know and and whatnot but um yeah one of those things is just like you just need to hear it from other people sometimes and that's you know like i think podcasts really help me get to where i'm at today which which is i'm grateful you know oh yeah man i uh just just doing this it's like very cathartic just to be able to just get out and open up and say what's on my mind i've, I've got to meet so many great people um and being a fan of podcasts and just that talk radio thing and i mean i'm admittingly a big howard stern fan for since like i'm, I'm a kid because <laughs> that was local i grew up in jersey and he was in new york who wasn't who wasn't i mean who wasn't a fan of you know a, a, a lot of people aren't <laughs> but you know it feel it seemed like they did uh some uh some studies and stuff on it and like the people that said they hated him tend to like listen to like more of him it's it's that's kind of how the hate thing works i guess but, <laughs> man i don't know you saw him in america's got talent like he's obviously not what people said he was about this, this sexist this or whatever like he donates so much money to north shore animal league he like loves animals he like does all this charity stuff and he has the best interviews period i mean joe rogan and a lot of these guys tim ferris they do great jobs like they're they're, they're the top of the food chain and podcasting but um howard stern even though he's older much older than the rest of these guys he's he just knocks it out of the park his ability to connect with people and have a personal dialogue mm -hmm. where they're going to open up and like i didn't care about lady gaga at all <laughs> and then he had lady gaga on his show and i'm like this she's just a girl from brooklyn yeah she and she was cool it, and she had a, it was a really great interview and so i'm, I'm not out there buying all her you know downloads and shit but. that that's what I call learning by accident. Yeah. You know, like things that you just listen to something or do something and you just learn by accident by, you never know, like, oh, you know, you might dislike a person, 
which is a really strong word, you know, dislike. Uh, but until you start hearing what they have to say and do and things, like, whoa, they're actually a great person, you know. You, uh, like, uh, uh, the one of the podcasts that I listen to is, uh, his name is Drama from... Um, from Robin Big? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, I mean, from my perspective of him at the show... He's a goopball. He was he's because he, he has the character of a tool. Because yes, he, he was big brothered by Rob on the show. Yes. So, you, so yeah, from what I've you know seen, he was a goopball from the show, and I was like, man, I'm not gonna listen to this guy. Like, so he had a podcast, and in my opinion, his podcast is the one that struck me the most out of all the podcasts I've been listening to. I mean, I listen to NPR. Listen, I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts, but it was it was him because he 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 admitted that he was not good but he was doing it just to start just to learn something new it's like finding that passion of learning so and he had some guests on there that like you know that really impact the way i think as a brand owner or even a creative guy i like it, it just blew my mind so there's a lot there's a really a lot of good stuff in there and but going into it but it, it, I'm, I'm i'm trying to say is like it, it's like just learning by accident, by just just stopping and just listen, you know, without having to give, you know, some kind of uh, uh, feedback already without hearing it, you know? Yeah, just some people only listen to other people talk just long enough for them to stop talking so they can get their <laughs> shit in. They're not really listening. Yeah. So... You know, like you said, you know, you, you learn a lot on accident. If you're just waiting for the other person to shut up so you can start talking about yourself or whatever. I'm guilty, by the way. With that. A lot of people do <laughs> it. A lot of people do it. But, you know, trying to catch it when we're doing it. And, you know, you know, because, you know, if you, I spend a lot of time just chilling by myself. Like if I, I just working on my own stuff, in my own kind of world. Yeah. And so there'll be points where I, you know, I'm like, you know, I'll just blah, I want to share a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, then I realize, oh wait, I'm just talking at this person now. Yeah. Like, okay, they're probably not that interested. So I'll just, <laughs> I'll make that a podcast is what I'll do, man. Yeah. So uh, nowadays is I'm learning how to be be in the being in the moment. So basically, I always have stuff in my head. I mean, I every single day, like my I have thoughts of everything. Like I could be doing this. I could be doing this for a gi. I could. Oh, how sick would it be if we produce a bag or stuff like that? So I would just be talking over a lot of people sometimes and I've, I've i've noticed it like when i go to a friend's house that are not into jujitsu but they're really they're they're my good friends and i would just sometimes i just talk over them and i don't listen to what i'm saying i'm just sometimes it's just kind of say, like i'm boosting myself a little bit maybe and my wife would check me i was like you know i was like hey yeah listen to yourself sometimes so that kind of checks me and just to like lower a little bit just be in the moment just to just to talk you know just listen to them and see what they have to say and see what they have to say about their nine to five jobs and whatnot and even if they say something kind of like negative in your own ways it might be right in their own ways so you just can't be advising all the time or whatnot and i'm guilty of that that you know so one of the things just be in the moment is just uh sometimes just listen and shut shut up <laughs> yeah sometimes so. people need to shut the fuck up and just <laughs> let things fall into place yeah um yeah it's it's really easy when you're doing something that's very difficult or like when you've already climbed hills and jumped hurdles and went through hoops and when you're you know you're finally starting to you know break through you're you're, you're starting to see your your geese for sale and like a market that's dedicated <sighs> to want versus need and stuff and then you know having feedback that may not be all that great or like if it's friends are going to be critical that like back in the day friends are critical like receiving feedback constructive or otherwise it's it can be challenging to be patient with it and be like ah oh, dude you don't know what you're talking about yeah but it just you know trying to process it and take it the right way and not you know nobody likes to be big time you know yeah yeah so yeah one of the things that we do, i do here at one versus nate one versus nate is i have three steps to do things when i do a product it's process people and product ppp so basically i just okay what is the process of what i need to get like a gi done and you know of course i have to mind what people 
are are doing or what they think about and whatnot. So so that way I just not putting products out all the time just because oh I'm gonna put this product out because it'll sell. But what is the process of like an example like this bag right here? It's like what is the process to make this bag? What would people think about the bag? So I I, I what I did is I made a plap in the outside so you after training you don't have a wet gi inside your bag is you put it on the outside and you strap it but how can we make it look nicer without having like a spaghetti strap or anything like that so so you know we just developed this but you know those those kind of thought process that i'm doing it's like i have to stop myself oh, i want to make this bag right away right now it's like what's the process what would people think what would how would can we how can we help the community to make better things rather than just putting products out so this is like one of the things that i'm trying to do but you know it, it, sometimes it's hard because i make a lot of things for myself you know so, so does this have a, so it, i see a skateboard deck in there could that be a place for a laptop too yeah no yeah you can put two laptops there's there's one there's one on the side right here uh oh i'm sorry yeah there's a pocket for the laptop on the side right here and there's another one and there's a bunch of pockets inside right, well, so you gotta let me know when production one's available because i need a backpack I, I broke my oh yeah yeah we just we just got we, we got them all in so Perfect. i'll make sure to uh when you leave one when you leave here you'll get one beautiful yeah yeah i I keep buying these um oh, just, Under Armour ones. Oh, hold on. Breaking. Just just in case someone's listening, this is not available for public, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, oh. This is um this was only made for the the membership that we've done earlier this year. Oh, wow. So uh yeah, it's all going to them. So I apologize. But if, is there is there a waiting list for next year's membership yet? Uh yeah, there is now. So we're starting to I think maybe in November we'll start opening it again and see how it goes. But you know, we're we're trying not to go way too big from what we can control. So we always try to limit it as much as possible because, you know, there's only it's only two of us here right now. You okay. know? <laughs> i hear you man I, for, for for this brand man i would do so many in-person things because it's like like it's just it's a it's a very bay area thing <laughs> you know what i mean like there's and there's so much jujitsu there's so many events there's so many like talented people i can count what two world champions like right on the same block yeah so yeah, it's uh I mean LA is sort of the mecca right now when it comes to talent, mm -hmm. but the Bay has always been like just had its roots so deep in like martial arts and you know uh, you know from from back in the day the the karate day, you know, Ernie Reyes all the way up to, you know, now we have like Kyotera. So it's uh Yeah, just, we have great I mean we have great jiu jitsu here in the Bay Area, you know. We got, you know, Mike Prudential from One World, uh my professor Gumby, uh Dave Carmelo. Yeah. Uh, Matt Darcy and uh, Kaitara just down the street, you know. I'm Christina always speaking there, yeah, you know. So yeah, I mean, it's it's great that Bay Area is really picking up. Oh yeah, I mean, everywhere you look, I mean, East Bay, there's a lot of great talent. Um, you go up to Stockton, obviously the Diaz brothers are up there. You go up to Sacramento, you got Team Alpha Male. You got Elliot Kelly, he's a monster. Yeah, at, at, uh, I think he's super ultra heavyweight. <laughs> He like he had a weekend where he just beat everybody. I mean, he beat um, what's his name, my uh, Vinny Magliesh in the uh, at the San Jose International Open. Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's big. Yeah. He, That's that, big. that was after he won his fight to win pro match. He won gi the first day and then no gi the second day. So three days in a row he won like gold, 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 gold. Jesus. Yeah. The, the guy and he, he's a super nice guy. Uh, great wrestler. He's a uh, he's one of Yamaso's guys, uh, Tori Grossa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 His, his guys. Um, never met him but he seems nice yeah uh yamaso is he's a badass too like yeah. he's like he's way stronger than he looks yeah so the guy like you know uh paul from open mat in las vegas uh he supports him a lot so whoever he supports i usually think like oh yeah they're nice people because paul is like the nicest guy ever so <laughs> yeah so you're from San Jose originally, huh? Or no, I was born in the Philippines. Really? Yeah, came here. I was uh, I was about seven, eight years old. Yeah. What's the uh, What's the current consensus on the new president over there? Like he's been kind of he's been kind of outspoken. <laughs> yeah, I don't have an opinion about it. I try to stick to what I do here. So, but I I do hear some crazy stuff. I mean, I don't. Particularly, like I, I mean, especially when I go on Facebook, I I see it, but I don't click on it. 
But I do have, you know, like uh, people that tells me some stuff like, oh, how this guy is doing this and how, what do you feel about it? I was like, I, I, at the moment, I'm, I have problems with my stuff here. So yeah, we got to get the geese sorted. <laughs> yeah. We're looking like pearl weave versus gold weave and some backpack problems. But, oh, uh, yeah, do, man. You, do you still have a family back in the Philippines? A little bit. Yeah. But most of them are here now. Oh, cool. So yeah, it's a little bit. So yeah, it's 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 always you know weird like you you hear stories and stuff like i always like to you know ask like for like if you said you were from miami i'd be like how about the hurricane you know what i'm saying like <laughs> yeah. because it's it's you know it's the it's the big news right now when you when you hear the philippines you hear about the the president and he's you know he's you know making the you know, big statement about the drug thing and the if you're outside of the philippines you're american now and all this oh. stuff the, 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 oh, I, didn't, I didn't know that he, he basically said like um, and this is paraphrasing and I'm probably wrong and that's fine if I am, um, but <laughs> for the Filipinos that are like, if they're in the ones in China that like break drug laws or whatever, they're on their own. We're not going to help. Like they're not going to, we're not going to try to bring them back. And the ones that are in the United States, they're like, they're Americans now. Like they're not. Oh my God. Yeah. Like it was just really bold stuff. And I, I, there's the, the penalties now for drug offenses selling or whatever is like, I'm, very I'm still Filipino. Yeah. I was going to say, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm a human. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a, <laughs> there you go. That's a good answer. Just being human. I, Just be a good human being. That's all. Dude, I, I took my ancestry.com DNA test. Oh, you I, did. Yeah, I paid the I paid the whatever the eighty nine dollars, ninety nine dollars for it. Like it was a while ago. What was the outcome? It it, it wasn't what I thought it was. It was oh. it was all kinds of crap. Oh. Uh. I thought I was just Irish and German because I only knew my dad's uh, ethnicity because my mom's adopted. Mm -hmm. And then I looked at it and I'm like, I'm everything. The the most I am of anything is just under 20% of Irish. And oh, then there's wow. a little bit, tiny bit of German. I'm more French than German. Um, I have stuff like uh, Eastern European. I have some Scandinavian stuff. I was like some percent, like just under 10% like of African stuff, like Moroccan and shit. Uh -huh. And I'm looking in the mirror, but the only thing, I mean, maybe, maybe like my body shape or whatever, I, I, I guess. But if you look at me in the winter, I'm real pale in the summer. Like I can, tan like I don't get that burnt, <laughs> but it doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it's apparently true. Um, cause it's DNA. I, I don't, oh, and I met first cousins, uh, that I didn't know I had. So I'm not even from the Bay Area I'm originally. I'm from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And apparently in Salinas or Monterey, mm -hmm. I have a first or second cousin. Oh. And it's through my mom's side. And she didn't know any of her family members. But she's been able to actually get, um, because she was adopted, all of her actual family uh you know rec not records but just information and pictures about her real mom and like that side of her family and she's like she's in her 70s now and she's finally learning about this stuff and it she was never able to connect like her whole life with any of these people so it's just been able to you know being able to like be part of that ancestry.com database and sort of interact with family mm. members I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, it was, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not very family oriented from my, you know, I mean, from my mom's side because that's pretty much who I knew the most is my mom's side. But you know, we do go here and there for family events and whatnot. But like I said, man, I had my, I had a kid when I was very young, so we we're kind of just on our own for since we're. 17 so but man that's 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 dope i want to I check that out it was pretty cool just you know you basically sign up and pay the whatever and they send you a kit you spit in a tube and send it back oh, oh you actually have to spit uh till you just like type in like your no, last no, name no. or something no you they take it's a dna test oh wow yeah so now they have my dna on record so i can't break any laws that are that bad or, i don't fucking know <laughs> I, I, I know for sure and the uh, you know, we're, I'm a mutt, you know, because just looking at the history of, you know, Philippines, it's like, I Spanish know, and yeah, we got, we, I mean, you, you know, Spanish, Japan, Chinese. Yeah. But the, the, the point is kind of like everybody's everything. So when I said, you know, I'm, I'm a human or I'm American, all this stuff, I don't have any native American blood in me at all. But if you were to sort of, you know, ask, you know, 10 random people out of like, which one of these people is American? And you would point at me, like, <laughs> I'm the, I was born here, but that's like, I just, that I woke up here as a baby. That, mm. That's all, that's all it is. It's, it doesn't, it doesn't mean anything else. It's like, you make these borders and you divide people a certain way and you decide that, okay, these people get a lot and these people get nothing, yeah. and, but there's no real difference between any of these people at all. 
There's no difference physically, uh, genetically, or any other way between any person, but we make these just divisive sort of constructs that separate people just for the sake of separating people. Yeah, I try to stay away. I mean, especially posting about politics and whatnot, but you know, I do see some things like, oh, you know, those guys are from there, so, you know, this shouldn't be allowed here. Like, I was like, man, it doesn't really matter where they're from. They're still, they're just, you know, just because they are there, they're still people, you know? Like, we, we should try to, um, you know, we should try to figure it out how we can help each other, but I don't know, you know? But, like, I try not to think about it, but just because people are in Mexico or whatnot, just because they're just under the border, they're still there. There's there's still people. Maybe they need help. Yeah, they, you know that's why they come here because it probably they're probably under conditions that aren't that great. A lot there's refugees from all over the world. And we're saying you know no refugees, all this stuff. Like what are you talking about? Like everybody's from everywhere. Yeah, I mean this whole country is made up from people from everywhere, and it's it's not even a political thing. It's just a human thing. Yeah, it's taking the politics away because politics are stupid. Like look look there's no do you see racism on the mat ever. Ever like Never. if you go train in Japan, there's yakuza and there's police at the same academy and they're rolling. <laughs> you know why? Because it's jujitsu. Like yeah. that, all that other stuff goes away. All the yeah, whatever your problem is, once you step on that mat, it's like it's your problem goes away. Yeah, everybody's friends. It's the they're, greatest thing everybody's ever. Everybody's friends. Everybody's chill. Everybody just you go on and train, and that's it. And yeah. then I have, I mean, in my neighborhood, shit. Everybody is from everywhere, all over the world. I'm in Sunnyvale, it's just like San Jose, man. Every, there's no, this is where the white people are, and this is where the <laughs> black people are. No, what the fuck? It's everybody's everywhere. And at the academy, it, you're just there and you're training, and nobody's thinking about, oh, this person's this re religion. So I, the, the, no. the religion's already jujitsu. Jujitsu is the church. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're yeah. And it's open door to everybody, and it's like, it's it's guaranteed to make your life better, like for sure better. Mm -hmm. No, I I agree. So I don't know. That's that's. But the, you might wake up a little bit, you know, your back's a little hurt just here and there. But it's uh, it's good. It's good for you. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, I guess technically it saved my life this this last this year. Cause uh, no man, I, I almost I don't know. Fuck it, I, I can I can get a little personal. I almost died. From from what? So, we'll, I'll break it down. Um, so my father died when I was 14 years old. Um, my dad was, a uh, was diabetic. He had diabetes type one, not the, you just have salads and you'll be fine. It's the other one where your, uh, your body just stops processing sugar. Right. Oh, yeah. So what happens is, uh, your pancreas just decides to take a shit. This is a layman. So if you're a doctor, fucking correct me offline. I don't know. <laughs> um, so basically this entire summer, I, I was, I normally around 218, 220 pounds. And over the course of the summer, I keep losing weight. I'm like, it's weird. Um, don't know what it is. Um, eating the same food. I'm like, well, maybe it's all the travel. Cause I'm, and then I started being dehydrated all the time. And no matter how much water I was drinking, I just had to pee constantly every 20 minutes. Like, this is like, what is, I thought it was maybe like a UTI, but I'm not doing anything to get a UTI. I'm like, maybe my kidney's doing something. So I'm starting to get like the supplements for kidney or liver support. Like maybe something's going on there. And, uh, and I got like an infection in my mouth and I'm tired all the time. And I just to go train, lift weights, anything, dude, any of that stuff was like, I'd have to take so much caffeine and pre-workout just to get on the mat. So when I, when I would lift weights, I'd just, I'd, do, I'd circuit, I, I'd do deadlifts, like I'd lift heavy, like I had my deadlift up to damn near 500 pounds. Like I was, I bust ass when I go lift weights. When I train, I'd, I'd go, I'd train hard. Like I take it seriously. Um, but over the summer, uh, just the last few months, I would go warm up on the elliptical and then I'd be like, dude, I gotta, I'd get halfway through like 10 minutes, but oh, I'm too tired. And I went all the way down to like 197, 196. And um, I'm like, man, what could this be? What could it be? And I started like, of course, WebMD and shit. And it's like, <laughs> you're diabetic. Like it's, oh, it's, it's for sure diabetes. And I'm like, so I, I wound up getting the, uh, the glucose test. I won't go into the, the, the specifics behind uh, that. It's, <laughs> I wind up getting the test and it, my blood sugar was damn near 600. Whoa. Which it should be like in the like 100-ish range. So um, a friend of a friend actually passed away, had a stroke in his sleep and didn't know he was diabetic either. And this guy just died. And he's only like 10, 15 years older than me. Wow. So uh, no, I, I basically all summer, 
Um, I had ridiculously high blood sugar and like the jujitsu, the hard training, and then like literally peeing out like the extra sugar, I guess, because having it like was what pretty much kept me alive. Oh, wow. So finally getting diagnosed and uh, getting insulin, you know, regiment set up. They got me doing one in the morning and they got me doing it uh, before meals. It's like a whole math problem now, but. So, you know, at first when I, when I found out, I was like, I was real bummed because one of the things that happens when your blood sugar spikes real bad and when it drops, uh, you get mood swings. Like I just, I, I was just all over the place. Emotions just being all real emo, uh, very uncharacteristic, just very, um, it's just not a good, not, not cool to be around. And like having my jujitsu class, having this podcast, having training, and like the people that, that uh, you know, my, my team and my friends from jujitsu having that to look forward to with as bad and as like low as I felt like, cause chemically you're all fucked up this high blood sugar shit. Yeah. It would just, I was just literally depressed, depressed, like dark, depressed, bad, horrible thoughts, bad, bad. So jujitsu literally saved my life. Wow. Like it, it and I, I don't usually talk like, this is like more personal. I usually just like to keep it pretty fucking. So, so how is it now? Dude, um, are you are you much so, better? So I'll tell you what, man. Like the first, I realized what it was. I was super bummed. I'm like, this is a death sentence. I saw my mom taking care of my dad until he passed away when I was 14. I, so I, I basically uh, we grew up in New Jersey, but after school every day, it was literally going to the University of Pennsylvania Hospital in Philadelphia, like going to see my dad in the hospital because he was always with something wrong, like infections in his feet, and like just he was losing his eyesight, and like it was it was a shit show. He was like he, oh, he yeah. basically died a slow, like uh, de debilitating, like uh, just horrible death. He went from everything being great to just it just took him and it, it oh, was just, wow. just agony years and years of this shit so yeah you know you're waiting in the hospital for him to get go home and he didn't we eventually moved to texas because it was warmer um and then like a year later he just passed away so wow. it, 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 so somewhat you envisioned that to yourself well it was <laughs> him plus six of his brothers and sisters was they all died before like basically y2k so i'm thinking that first day when i found out before i actually I went to the pharmacy and got all the shit I needed to get. Um, just like a real down, like you gotta be kidding. You just handed me a death sentence. Once I actually started taking the insulin and getting my blood sugar and I'm, I have to test it constantly. I have to, it's basically this math problem where I have to think like, okay, what's my current blood sugar? What am I about to eat? And there's, there's basically, I have to take the right amount of insulin to correct for both to get it right into some like acceptable threshold. If you get that right with diet and everything, um, which is what I've been working on and what I've, I think I'm doing a pretty good job at, I have energy again. I feel fucking great. I feel <sighs> strong. Like I've already put weight back on. I'm kicking ass. It's good to hear, man. Yeah, I just I can't have sugar. I can't have a bunch of carb food. I, I, but maybe I, that's a blessing in disguise. I, dude, <laughs> I was very. Um, I just because of genes, and it's, it sounds very like backwards that because of genetics. I was I was starting to get like lazy with diet because I'm like, dude, I'm just gonna I'm gonna have a six pack and a fucking physique forever and whatever, and I can eat whatever I want. And I'm just gonna train it off, and it's it basically now you're watching out what you eat. Now I have to, or yeah. I will die. Yeah, or I'll start losing my vision because I. Um, hmm. How about fuck Walgreens. <laughs> fuck Walgreens. Fuck Walgreens on uh, Decatur and uh, Tropicana in fucking Las Vegas. <laughs> fuck Walgreens. And fuck that pharmacy tech for this. Um, I was, I, I was, no, seriously, this sucks. Uh, I was driving. Um, I, I drove to see my mother because uh, I just wanted to be with family. I just, this sucks. And uh, I, I got to, so she lives outside of Las Vegas, about an hour outside of Las Vegas in uh, Nye County in Pahrump. And uh, I, realize i was out of syringes uh because you have to inject yourself with you know insulin so it's it's part of it it sucks fucking get tired of sticking myself with needles um and i'm like i'll just go to walgreens i thought i had some more in my bag and i didn't my bad for not being prepared it is this is my fault i'll take full responsibility i should have been more prepared i'm new at this very very new at the time so uh so here i am and uh I'm like, I'll just go to Walgreens, go to tried Walgreens, tried Walmart. The pharmacy's closed. It's like Labor Day weekend, Saturday. Okay, well, I got to drive to Vegas now. It's a couple months ago then. This is, uh, this is yeah, it's under, it was a couple weeks ago, actually. Mm -hmm. 
So I like, okay, well, I got to drive to Vegas, which is like 60 miles. And my blood sugar was already pretty high. Like it was, it was high, higher than I thought it was going to be. Um, again, I'm new at this and I was getting, my body is getting used to actually having fucking insulin injections and whatever. Yeah. So I drive all the way to uh, Las Vegas, go to the first Walgreens there and there, no, you have to go to the one on Decatur and Tropicana. Okay. That's, that's, there's, if you've ever been to Vegas, there's a 24 hour fitness pretty close to the strip. It's right in that plaza. So I go there and um, my vision's already starting to kind of blur because I guess with high, like really high blood sugar, there's like, I think it's the cornea, the retina, like it'll swell, like the connecting thing will swell a little mm -hmm. bit. So your vision gets blurry. Um, so I go to the pharmacist, uh, the pharmacy tech and I said, you know, Hey, I need these 31 gauge, uh, those little insulin syringes, like the really short ones There's for insulin. I'm, I'm you know, diabetic and whatever. And she's like, Oh, well, where's your prescription? Well, my pharmacy's in California. Wait, wait, you need a prescription for needles? She, I said, she said, well, it's law. I was like, it's actually not the law. She's like, oh, well, it's our discretion. And I, I said, well, I'm, I'm diabetic. I, I'm, I have a really high blood sugar. I'm, my vision's already kind of blurry right now. I, I can't drive to the ER to do this right now. Like, I, I really just, I only need to buy maybe a couple from you. Can I buy a bag of 10? It costs like a couple of bucks. It's nothing. And uh, she said, well, it's our discretion. So um, uh, hold on next. And then, so the next guy comes and she, the, she literally starts talking to the next guy in line about drug seeking behavior, like sitting there talking shit about me in front of me. Like I'm there buying it for like injecting, like either like steroids or heroin. I don't know what the fuck she was alluding to or mm -hmm. like whatever else you inject, but she's literally talking about me right in front of me. And I'm like, first of all, you just violated my rights. Like that's HIPAA. Like that's medical privacy shit. Second of all, you humiliate, you just straight humiliated me by like talking to me like that. And I'm, I'm like, I wasn't even getting mad. Cause at this point I hadn't, I was like, my vision's really starting to blur and I'm getting scared. I'm like, can I talk to a manager? She's like, well, she's not here right now. Kind of thing. I was like, oh, come on. And, uh, I'm like, well, I'm going to sit down. If I pass out, like you probably want to call nine one one. Cause like, that's, I'm not, I'm not making this up. Like I actually need to buy these. I don't have any left. I have my insulin in the car. I have the test thing. And she's just like, just kind of blowing me off not even responding at this point i'm not being angry i'm not being rude to this person i am legitimately scared like actually scared to the point of like so i I'm, i just go to leave and i go to get in my car to try to go to a different pharmacy at this point i'm like dude just super embarrassed like i feel like humiliated yeah very just like what just happened in there like i didn't get it and then i'm like the realization set in that i gotta move my ass now but i can't see shit Oh wow! Just imagine. Holy do shit. you wear glasses or contacts? No, I don't. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it just imagine. Like, My wife does, and she can't see anything at night. Well, that's what it turns into, and I'm like, there's, and it was traffic. It's Saturday night in Vegas. There's no way. So I saw uh, um this the passenger seat of my car. I had my insulin and the machine, uh, the little thing like where you test your blood sugar. It's a glucometer, I think. And I pushed power on it and I was like, oh shit, like it stores the last couple tests. And I'm like, so I just brought all that back in there. And by then uh, a different lady was in the front. I guess this is the actual pharmacist as, as opposed to like the assistant. And I said, hey, I was just in here a second ago and I've uh, my, my blood, I'm just diabetic. My blood sugar is very high. Um, and I, I, I need to buy uh, syringes. I, I'm, I'm from out of state. I'm from California. I don't have a prescription here. It's at my pharmacy there, you know, back home. It's Saturday night. And she just told me I can't buy them. My blood sugar is, and I showed it to her and it was like almost 500, dude. It's like, Whoa. this is bad, bad, bad. Like I, it's just, it, that's where it was. Um, it, it isn't now like I manage it. It's fine. This is at, this is when I first got diagnosed. It was just fucking all over the place. It's bad. <laughs> and you're um, new to it, dude. Yeah, I was, I was really new and I just drove a long damn way and I expected to be able to be you know, be able to take my shit. Yeah. And uh, she's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. She's like, she looks back at the lady and just like shakes her head at her. Like what the, you know, what the fuck did you just do? She opens a box of uh, syringes and just like gives me a bag. She's like, no charge, no charge. I'm like, no, I'm not homeless. I'm not broke. <laughs> I just don't want to be treated like, a, like a like a disabled yeah like like no like a like a like a like a thief or like a drug addict or something oh. that's like she literally treated me like i was like some person going in there like trying to be like buying you can't look like you're doing meth yes <laughs> like I, and uh i'm like my eyes are like watered up at this point because oh, i'm wow. like i'm scared and i'm like that you just embarrassed the shit out of me yeah to the point where like they're like literally the next the customer 
and this lady are talking shit about me in front of me, in front of me in a fucking store when I'm like <laughs> literally at my most vulnerable I possibly could be. So like, like I just said very clearly, fuck Walgreens for that. Oh, wow. Um, and just... You know what? I, I wasn't going to say shit about it. I, I wasn't. I wasn't going to make a big deal about it. But that's how they treat people. Like they think of all the bullshit in pharmacies, man. All the drugs they put out. All the fucking painkillers. All the fucking Viagra. They put out all this Viagra and they put out heart pills. But they don't tell a single motherfucker to go lose weight. If you need Viagra, something's <laughs> wrong with your heart. Your, your blood is not being pumped from your heart to your dick. You don't need Viagra. You need a fucking new diet and a priest. <laughs> But I can't fucking do something that's going to save my life. So fuck Walgreens and fuck that lady for trying to fucking act like I'm some kind of drug addict. Oh, you're the God. fucking drug dealer. Oh, my God. There. There's my. There, there's me. There's me being I, personal uh, and sounding off. Fuck Walgreens. For that. <laughs> I have no words for it. <laughs> there. But that, it, that was it, fucking live. So oh, good. But, but, but lucky now that you're, it seems like you're, you're feeling better. I feel fucking great. I feel t like 10 years younger, but like oh, wow. old man strong. <laughs> <laughs> old man jiu-jitsu strength. Exactly. Man. I, I ain't even that old. Gotta watch out for those guys. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I want to, I want to get back by us open. I think like my weight will normalize by then. Cause like you, once I went from being shitty blood sugar, almost dead to like, actually now I'm eating right now. I'm fucking taking the shots when I'm supposed to, the weight came back quick and I'm it's just, somewhat blessing in disguise. Yeah. Now I can like hyper focus on it and always make sure I'm within threshold because that means I'm processing food as efficiently as possible. Wow. So it's like, it, in terms of a blessing, it's like, yeah, it, 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 it is. And now I know to to look closer at things and to to only get food from the uh, the perimeter instead of the, because if you look at every anyway. grocery store, the, the inside of the grocery store, like the middle parts all processed bullshit, except Sriracha, I love Sriracha, that's in there though. <laughs> but on the outside was the fruits and vegetables and the meat and stuff. And if you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry, but I already can't have sugar. I'm still gonna eat meat though. <laughs> like I need, I need some joy. I yeah, so I mean, you know, I'm guilty of just eating crap all the time. Like, I'm here when I'm here, super late at night, and and if I feel lazy or just don't want to wait for the restaurant to cook me any food, whatnot, it's like I just run to McDonald's. I, but you know, I I used to get sometimes, away with it. Yeah, I thought, but no, I didn't. I didn't, and I think what triggered it. I hate this word triggered. Uh, what triggered, I think, was uh, being on the road so much for the podcast. It's like truck stops and restaurants, oh. and uh, on top of like being expensive, like eating out is really expensive. Even if you're not going to expensive places, like it just adds up. Yeah. Um. I think it was just that, just mixed with just not resting properly and um, just being on the road. Being, I don't know. I think at some point it was just like it's genetic. My dad had it. It's a heredity thing. And for people out there that think they know and think they're going to tell me I can reverse it with a diet, that's type two. I don't have that one. So it's, it's just, it, that's it. But if I go like keto diet, maybe I can um, spend less money on insulin. I won't need it as much. Because if I don't raise my carbohydrate level, my sugar level, which carbohydrates, the sugar, it turns into sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, alcohol turns into sugar. It's just everything sugar. And there is there is a sugar epidemic in the country. People don't want to fucking talk about because then they stop selling everything. But um, anyway, that's me sounding off on personal shit. Um, <laughs> fucking, I, I was gonna do it at some point. I was gonna like cut a separate one, but I'd rather just fucking. Oh, but you know, there might be some people out there just going through the same thing, and which is great to talk about now, you know, because you never know. Somebody might be listening and going through the same kind of stuff, and maybe they just need somebody's, you know opinion or you just need to hear somebody that's going through it and makes it easier for for them you know you know what lowers blood sugar jujitsu that's not i'm not even fucking around it does <laughs> uh exercise so th with some with some conditions it's like oh well, rest is the best medicine no if you have high blood sugar <laughs> you fucking want to work out you want to mm. burn it you will burn it off and so I, I have to check after i train like hard hard that it's not too low Oh, so you know what I'm saying? It's it's like a, it's a constant sort of math problem the whole time. But yes, jujitsu saved my life, and not just it say it got me out of the streets or whatever. No, it got me out of dying because if I wasn't training, because I wasn't gonna miss training. My <laughs> my my love, my passion for jujitsu is so deep that even like getting out of bed to go to the bathroom was like, oh no, like 
just lethargic. So I was I was getting the what what's it called the uh, the no exp, not no explode uh, C four like pre workouts. Oh yeah, and I never would take that shit pre jujitsu. But that would be just like okay, let's do this, or like a caffeine thing. Or that thing makes me go nuts. That that thing woke <laughs> me up enough to floral, because that's how like they, that's how like near fucking you know the six feet under i was with this wow. shit and i went all summer undiagnosed i had no idea what was wrong i was just peeing every 10 seconds i was like what are you you got the like a little girl bladder it's like yeah <laughs> shut up whatever and i didn't know and went to doctors they're like uh it's like going to go get your oil changed uh and or like your your engine checked at the mechanic and they're like everything looks fine but it's a transmission problem or it's like the rear uh or it's like the rear differential yeah it's like that's not their expertise they're not gonna know yeah that's right so you're just like oh here's your fucking just drink cranberry juice and fuck off kind of thing well, no. <laughs> I mean, that's the opposite because there's there's a ton of sugar in there and it made it worse oh well, yeah i think there's <laughs> i mean i mean it's so hard to pinpoint a food out there that doesn't have any kind of sugar oh dude i know I know, and I like sugar, uh, and like I love carbs. So it's trying to find foods that don't yeah. suck. And I'm because you're Asian, like rice, everything. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, my um, one of my friends, uh, former training partner, training partner Aki, uh, he found out he was uh, like he went and did this full panel to figure out you know uh, his allergens and things that he was allergic to, and it turned out he was allergic to the beer and rice both, and he's oh. Japanese. It's like, oh. oh, dude, it's like you don't even want to know at that point. Taki from Gorilla. Huh? Taki from Gorilla? Uh, Aki Yoshikawa. Oh, okay, no. Uh, he was he was like the stud wrestler at uh, Fremont High School. He's like a legend at Fremont High. Oh wow. He's uh he's, he's not the biggest guy, but like he's a he, he was a badass. He had a, he had to stop because uh, some injuries at uh, I think Blue Belt. But yeah, like, he was he was a savage. He, uh, he was he was really high level judoka. He was like really high level wrestler, and then he got into jiu-jitsu. But uh, yeah, he went to uh, you know he get his uh, he was he was just getting sick or something i don't mm. remember the full story but yeah it turned out he's a japanese guy allergic to, to rice and beer i was like oh that sucks oh wow yeah I don't know. fucking yeah that's 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 my update man what's uh what's new on the horizon what's what's coming up for want versus need um maybe it's a little early but uh i think next month in october we are partnering with a uh, breast cancer organization and we're going to be releasing uh, kimonos in October. Uh yeah, so 100% of the profit will go I think this yeah, this is the one. Oh. I I think 100% of the profit will go towards their um their organization. I can't say yet until we release the, you know, the formal press release and whatnot, but you know, like I said, like I feel like we are not supposed to we're not supposed to be in this position and we are in such unique position that i feel like we need to be able we need to be able to give back to the community not just jiu-jitsu but you know for for outside of jiu-jitsu so um i've heard about this um organization it's like you, you know how like red cross uh the way they, they do their money is kind of spreads out to like worldwide this particular one focuses in the bay area and it most it, it's kind of like helps the families more rather than you know, worldwide and whatnot. So it's kind of dear to our hearts just locally and whatnot. So uh, yeah, we're going to have more information about that. But yeah, 100% of profit will go towards uh, this uh, organization. It's very cool. It's, it's good to yeah. keep it local too. Um, I'm very sort of community oriented. I, I, I always believe that, you know, the, the secrets like the two big secrets to business I think moving forward are one, the human aspect, like actually being like a person to person thing. Like I think all this automation is just, it's not is it's not all that it's cracked up to be. I think the businesses that are really going to succeed are the ones where it feels like there's like a real human connection because it's, it's lacking so much in society and two, like when, when the Bay, like honestly, like all these Bay area companies, they try to like go and be viral and all this stuff, but like they, their roots to home are like not even there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. like just the sense of community, like in my, in my neighborhood, I know all my neighbors. I know all the businesses near me. Um, the gym, the, my main gym, AKA Sunnyvale, it's 0.1 mile from where I live. I literally walk out my oh. door and it's right there. Um, and that's deliberate, man. I, I like to, I, I'm, I'm all about community. I'm old school about, about it. I want to know my neighbors. I, I want to know my neighbors are okay. If somebody in the neighborhood gets sick or dies, like I know. Yeah. I mean, that's one of my goal this year actually is, is, to create a community that even if you're not near 
to us or you can't touch or you know be able to visit us is is you can belong to a community you know like an outsider being an insider so yeah we created like you know like a group called uh this is a uh, pretty funny it's called hba homies before all but yeah so basically my, my 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 term on that in regards to that is like no matter what happens is like always support your friends first homies before all because you know like whatever you're going through or whatever your friends is going through you gotta, you gotta make sure you support them as much as possible so yeah we're trying to create that community within jujitsu and in hope that we can kind of uh get that bigger you know and we, al- we always ask ourselves especially here in one versus need it's like what can we do for others all the time i always have to think about that like what can we do for others because like i said you know where i'm from where i came from what i've done in my life is like we're not so i feel like i feel like i'm not supposed to be in this position so when i when i feel grateful about it it's like i had to ask myself almost every day it's like what can we do for others as much as possible because you know like we're grateful and we're thankful that we're here and uh you know we are we're able to uh you know move mer- uh, merchandise and whatnot but you know t-shirt and kimonos are just merch but what this is all about is just you know like the people around us you know the community and stuff like that you know like relationship with our friends and that's how we kind of that's how i want to grow want versus need it's just i don't want to grow want versus need just be like oh just sell products here and there all the time and there's no real soul to it behind it so in hope we can target that and i hope it comes across you know so no it definitely does i mean you see uh sort of the uh the open mats over at one world you see all the want versus need stuff over there but it's it's not strangers everybody knows each other yeah. you know uh and, and it, even you know uh, over at heroes gumby's gym man or your gym every it's it's just a big community just like one world it's uh that uh the the stuff that gumby and mike preach it's uh it's it's really sort of you know come to fruition and oh yeah you know the, the brands like yours really uh you know embody that 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 sense of community that spirit of you know it's like we're all in this thing together we're all part of something yeah so that, that feeling of belonging I, I think it's like lacking with a lot of people so i think it really calls to the the people in the jujitsu community that are looking for more than just you know merch you said like more than just swag or whatever yeah and then that's the thing like i'm i think i'm surrounded by great people i'm like i said i'm a byproduct of my surroundings like you know gumby has have have always taken the time to talk to me in regards to some ideas and what he's trying to do. And he's like probably the perfect example as a jiu-jitsu coach, you know, like he's willing to help you with with your jiu-jitsu, but also willing to help you outside of your life or whatever you need. He's, he always got our back. So which is, you know, one of the greatest thing that, you know, to be able to train under him and just super thankful that uh, he, he, he lets me, and kind of helps me like provide any feedback that he can as much as possible oh yeah man well gumby held it down during sort of the dark days of jujitsu he was uh him and scott uh with otm and everything and you know he was uh he, he was actually very influential to me he was uh one of my first instructors over at half gracie and mountain view oh wow so yeah i would uh i would they i think they had a five thirty class and a six thirty class you know the fundamentals and the regular one so I would show up to fundamentals and there'd be a couple times where it would just be me or me and one other person, then Gumby and Batata. So it was basically a, you know, a free private with Gumby. Yeah. And that was, uh, you know, that was, you know, very, very important, you know, just in, in terms of my own games development, just, he's always been like very thoughtful and, uh, well-spoken. He's just, a his style of teaching, uh, you know, resonated really well. It, 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 I was able to connect to it because, you know, it's, he's kind of a tech guy too like yeah. he's he has, he has that background as well so i mean I I, I I i like to ask why but i generally don't ask you know I, I won't do that out loud but in the back of my head like i'm always thinking why and like he'll always explain things very deliberately and he'll make them make Absolutely. sense i mean he's a great example of a good human being oh, from yeah. on the mat and outside the mat oh yeah all the time he always carries himself very highly in regards to you know doing things in life so I admire Gumby a lot. Oh yeah, he's 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 good people, man. He's uh he's he's a quality. Also, Mike, Mike Prudential too. <laughs> yeah, those, those, those guys. <laughs> That's I, I've I've had the, the the privilege of you know training under Mike for years now, and um you know Gumby initially, and I'm always you know whenever there's events, I'm the, you know the, the the Haiti seminar, and they, there's always 
pretty big events that uh you guys host over at heroes and stuff so it's i'm always very happy to join you know uh he's it's, he's a huge part of the you know the jiu-jitsu community has been especially has been a staple in the bay and you know i met him in 2005 and uh yeah, it's, he's he, Gumby's an awesome guy. So he's, we're we're very lucky in the the bay to have the instructors we do to, for e each of us, and then you know the the people that live here in general. There's so many great schools. It's uh, you can't really go wrong. Oh yeah, I mean they're like I said, they're that great example to doing this kind of things, and it kind of grew kind of grows on me and be like, oh, I should do it too. Like I should I should be trying to get the community together as much as possible, you know. And like I said, you know, we are in such a unique position that uh, we're moving products and, you know, we got to look at ourselves like, are we just going to keep taking, you know, we got to get back. So that's yeah. one of our, that's the reason why when I heard a story, when I spoke to this uh, breast cancer organization, it was like what they're trying to do. I was like, I'm in. Let's figure out what we can do. So, uh, you know, they were super stoked about it. I'm stoked about it that they're willing to work with us. And here we are. We got the sample and uh, we're starting to produce now and in hope that we'll get it by October. Very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the, uh, I, I have one, I have one breast cancer awareness key, I think from a year or two ago. It's white with pink. So I rock it all the time. I like, that's, I, I like the colorway. I like, I, I like how pink pops on different colors and stuff yeah. it looks weird because i'm not the smallest guy and <laughs> I, you know I, I got like a pink backpack or headphones and then like the, it, i just it, it, it stands out i like the color and takes your balls I, to wear it <laughs> dude, ain't nobody paying my bills but me <laughs> yeah. I keep my eyes on my own paper so i know that's I, there's one vote and what the what i how i carry myself what i wear what i say what i do and st once again fuck walgreens <laughs> you guys almost killed me by trying to decide that i was a drug addict i'm not a drug addict i needed fucking insulin syringes because i was dying <laughs> anyway i'm fucking around i'm not that mad <laughs> fuck walgreens <laughs> anyway man we've been going at it for a little while i think you got a truck to take care of yes yeah. it's, it's getting late i gotta go remind some folks that one world open mat <laughs> that's my turf i'm playing i miss those guys i gotta go roll uh dude i appreciate the hospitality i no, appreciate thank you the time to do this on such short notice this will drop tomorrow morning monday wow fast the hiatus is over the clint cronin show is returned baby yeah and um you guys be good to each other oh thank you brother thank you i appreciate it want versus need what's it want versus need.com yep that's it very easy what's your uh your your ig your twitter all that stuff oh it's just all want versus need handle all, that's all it want versus yeah. need. well y'all need it so <laughs> make sure and get your stuff um quality products merchandise sorry y'all can't get that backpack but the breast cancer awareness stuff you better buy it because <laughs> that shit's real thank you again for watching episode 54 allegura want versus need clean cronin show san jose represent <laughs> fuck walgreens <laughs> Thank you, thank you.